Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today, especially in light of everything going on. We hope you're staying happy and healthy and washing your hands. Um, my name is Kelsey Nager and I am the Employer Experience Coordinator at USD's Career Development Center. So I work with employers to get them on campus for various events like info sessions, on-campus interviews, and career fairs. We're excited to have Adriana here today to talk about City Year and I'll hand it off to her. Awesome. Thank you, Kelsey. Um, once again, my name is Adriana Ryan. I'm a regional recruitment manager with City Year. So I am working with students from USD as well as UCSD, um, other San Diego schools um, that are interested, other students that are interested in serving in City Year and supporting them through the application process. So I'll kind of share a little more about the organization and the, the opportunities we have available for students. Um, but a little bit about myself and my background. I graduated from UCSD in 2012 with a bachelor's in human development. And then I did city year after I graduated from UCSD. So I did a year as a city year AmeriCorps member, which I'll share more about what that entails. And then kind of stayed in the nonprofit sector ever since, and then went back to USD in 2016 for my master's in nonprofit leadership and management. Um, so really fell in love with the nonprofit sector. And I think, um, doing city year after graduation definitely gave me that good understanding and overview of the sector and um, gave me that passion to pursue a career in that. Um, so before we get started, I have a quick video to show you all um, that shares a little more context about the organization and the role itself. I really do believe that our humanity is tied to one another. The issues in U.S. public education that affect kids' lives tremendously, you know, they affect all of our lives because we're all connected. That, as one of City Year's kind of core values, was really appealing to me. My name is Dan Flynn, and I am a proud core member of City Year Boston. I heard about City Year through a good friend of mine who actually served last year, and it sounded like some of the most fulfilling work that you could be doing. It sounded hard, it sounded challenging, but it sounded really worthwhile. I have no idea what the day's gonna bring. You know, each day is truly unique and has its own set of challenges. That's what gets me out of bed. What City Year does is we work with a whole school, whole child approach, which is this really holistic and organic approach to helping people succeed. But we're also aiding in transitions in the hallway, providing general oversight. Wherever there's hands needed, there's a City Year core member. My favorite thing about being in the classroom is my relationship with my students. It's cool to be doing the, the nitty gritty work where you are helping teachers get one of the hardest jobs in America done. You're watching minds be formed, which is cool. It's really cool. One of the students I've formed this uh, really special relationship with is a sixth grader named Terrence. He's really bright and he has this great energy, but he has some issues going on outside of the classroom. Sometimes he gets a little confused, sometimes he has a harder time processing things, but when we work together, we can always get through it. Being an adult that he can have this relationship with, it kind of allows him to be in a safe space where he can confront his challenges and learn. I want him to have the same confidence in himself that I have in him, and I think he's gonna go places. I feel like his mentor, and that is a really fulfilling thing. I think anyone who's looking at City Year should be up for a challenge, you know, because they're gonna get one, but I've never once been bored. I've been tired, haven't been bored. This is really hard and fulfilling work. You know, it's one thing to be on a sports team. It's one thing to be in a student organization. It's another thing entirely to be helping kids change their lives in a classroom and to be working with a team of other dedicated individuals to accomplish this great, seemingly overwhelming, ambitious goal. I love what I do. I represent a belief in a cause. I represent a belief in the power of young people. It kind of shows you that you're part of something bigger than yourself.
Awesome. So definitely love to start with that video just to give a little more context um, and share a little more insight as to you know what city year is in our model. But first, I wanted to address um, the ongoing situation too and just um, city year's response to COVID-19. So city year is taking the action to ensure that we're prioritizing the safety of our people and reducing the likelihood of virus transmission in our communities. Um, so we have a response team that is working the field to direct questions from people and to proactively prepare and respond to unique needs across our 29 cities. So our leadership team is working closely in each city um, with local officials and school districts to monitor and react th to the unique situations. Um, so as you saw in the video, our work is primarily done in school in schools, um, but with obviously, you know, schools closing, we uh, pulled our core members out of service. So they are now doing virtual service, which again is not how they anticipated ending their service year, but nonetheless, we wanna make sure that they are safe as well. Um, and still, they're still receiving their full benefits and pay as promised for serving through the end of um, the school year. Um, but I think if anything, it's also kind of pulled back the curtain a little more on this issue of access. So as some of our school districts across the country have been able to transition to online learning, they've been able to send their kids home with Chromebooks, um, they, there's this expectation that students have access to Wi-Fi at home too. Um, that's not the case for all of our students and that's not the case for a lot of the school districts and the students that we work with. So I think if anything, it's shedding more light on this issue of access and it's um, clear that our students are gonna need talented people like you more than ever to start in the 2020-2021 school year. Um, okay, so the, our organizational model is centered around the City Year AmeriCorps member role, which is the one that I specifically recruit for. And then I also served with City Year Boston after I graduated from UCSD in 2012. So personally, I was at this crossroad of, you know, I was graduating with this degree and wanting to maybe see where that fit in, whether it be grad school or maybe the workforce. And I wasn't really sure yet and didn't really want to commit to, you know, a grad program right away that maybe wasn't aligned. And then also in terms of like a career, I still wanted to be able to like gain more experience um, in, in, this, in this setting to be able to like better identify where I saw myself. Um, and I think City Year definitely gave me that passion for the nonprofit sector. And I stayed in the nonprofit sector ever since my um, core year with City Year. So I went on to work for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, uh, worked for a nonprofit consulting firm, nonprofit biotech most recently before coming back to City Year as a recruitment manager. So all this to say that, you know, yes, we're education focused. Yes, we're working with students, but you don't have to go into education to want to do our program. I think for a lot of folks that are passionate about social change, social impact, or wanting to do something, you know, bigger than yourself, um, and joining a, co a cause like this, an organization like this, that's um, a social justice focused organization too, I think can be so impactful in any field that you're gonna go into. So a little bit of background in more context. I know some of you may already know some of this information, but wanting to kind of just let uh, paint a little bit of a better picture of like where City Year operates in the educational landscape and where we are now. So. Um, across the country, we're seeing about 800,000 students um, that are not completing high school each year. Um, that number has gone down, but it's still a staggering number, um, and it's happening disproportionately in communities of color and urban cities. And so we say that it's a solvable solvable problem in that sense because we know where it's happening. We know where we need to direct our efforts and where we need to go um, to be able to address um, the issue head on. And so now that we know like which cities and which communities we need to target, we know the students that need the extra support by these three early warning indicators. So John Hopkins conducted a study recently that found that students that are showing um, any of these three early warning indicators, either in attendance, behavior, or coursework, um, if they're showing like red flags in these, in these three areas, or one of these three areas that can predict, um, you know, to what degree um, they're more likely to graduate high school and graduate on or graduate on to the next grade level on time. And so we use those three early warning indicators to let us know like which students we need to work with in the schools that we're supporting. 
So um, students who exhibit one or more early warning signs, like I mentioned, have at least a 75% um, chance of not completing high school on time. But students who begin the 10th grade on time and on track in coursework and grades are three to four times more likely to graduate high school. So City Air operates um, from third grade all the way up until 10th grade. We know if a student's not reading at grade level as early as third grade, they're more likely to continue to fall behind um, and, you know, get just maybe pushed through the system or, you know, the unfortunate, um, uh, I guess, like worst case scenario would be that they drop out too. So um, I, again, either getting pushed through the system and not being on track and not being at grade level, but um, it, you know, the goal would be to have city or core members working with students from third grade all the way to 10th grade so that they graduate on time and um, hopefully graduate high school successfully. And so how we do that is through our organizational model of, you know, city, uh, recruiting city or AmeriCorps members to serve in our 29 locations across the country. And so the position itself is going to be an 11 month commitment. And so it's 11 months starting summer of 2020 and going through June of 2021. Again, we'll kind of um, adjust and adapt as we find out more in the coming months of like when schools will reopen in the fall and what that will look like. But for now, we're planning to hopefully start um, on time, maybe just a little bit um, delayed, maybe into August if needed. Um, and City Year Corps members will be working on a diverse team of young individuals. Um, they'll be primarily tutoring and mentoring in a high need school. So they'll be there during the day, tutoring and mentoring, and then they'll also be there after school, running after school programs. I'll dive more into each of these sections as we kind of go along, but I just like to kind of like provide like the broader overview first of um, what this looks like. So a couple of the benefits, um, we do have 29 locations across the country. You can select where you want to serve. We have uh, it is a paid opportunity, so you receive a bi-weekly living allowance, um, and that can range kind of depending on the location. We do provide relocation allowance, health care benefits, food stamps um, is an optional benefit, but you can enroll in that. Professional development throughout the year. Um, again, we want to make sure that this year is geared towards your growth and your professional development and help, going to help get you to those next steps. Um, student Loan Forbearance, Seagull Education Award. I'll talk about what that scholarship means and what that looks like. And then you'll also gain the City or Alumni Network after your, you graduate from the program. The application process, just to um, put that on your radar, we do have one coming up this Friday. Totally doable for folks that are maybe wanting to consider submitting by this Friday. Um, it's pretty streamlined. It's a short answer plus a resume and then one professional reference and the professional reference does not need to be submitted by this Friday. That can come in um, in the following week too. All of the interviews will be conducted via phone or Skype so you don't have to travel anywhere if you're applying to a new site. And yeah, like I said, I'll dive more into those pieces. So first to kind of um, start us off, a little bit of a visual of like what your day-to-day -day might look like. So like I mentioned, you're gonna be with a team at a high need school. So for instance, my team and I were placed at a K-8 school in Boston. I was paired specifically with an eighth grade classroom. And within the eighth grade classroom, I had a cohort of students. We, we put those students um, on a focus list. And so that focus list were students that had been identified as needing maybe more one-on-one -on -one support or a little more individualized attention during the day. So those were the students that I would target that one-on-one -on -one time with when I was directly in the classroom working alongside the teacher. So maybe after, you know, the teacher taught the math lesson, I would work with my students maybe in the back of the classroom or in the hallway or in the team space just away from distractions. Um, because you're in the classroom, you're at, a, at an advantage and you can tailor a lesson plan to how that student learns best or, um, you know, just be able to break things down a little bit slower for them if they need, you know, to review things again or just see where the gaps were, like what they're understanding, what they're not understanding, and be able to bridge that gap. So that's the advantage you have by being in the classroom. Um, you know, in English, we do a lot of like reading comprehension and getting students um, back up to grade level if they're not reading at grade level. Um, and so again, you'll be directly in the classroom. Um, depending on how the 
team and the school site might be structured. Some folks are devoted specifically to a specific sub subject level. Um, for instance, I was with like my eighth grade cohort of students and I basically went with my eighth graders to all of their core classes. My focus was on math and English, but then I was still supporting them academically in other areas too. Um, but also you're gonna be a mentor for these students too that you're working with. So we know, you know, at some point in time in a student's educational um, career, they might, they may experience some level of trauma, whether it be at home or at school. And if they don't have someone they can talk to or someone they can connect with, um, that's gonna make it harder to stay focused and um, make academics their priority. So that's why City Year is placing core members directly in the classroom. That way students have someone they can go to and talk to if they need that support. Uh, we know we're not trained counselors you know, to that capacity, but oftentimes students just need someone that can sit there and listen and help empathize and maybe just talk through some of the things they, they might go might be going through we know we're not going to like solve whatever it is it may be but i think just um the power of like communicating and having a, um, that outlet can be so overlooked and especially now where we're seeing you know school counselors being stretched between multiple school districts or or just you know being under resourced um at you know their schools, um, I think now more than ever too, we need these additional supports directly in the classroom. Um, so you'll also collaborate with teachers to identify that support. Like I mentioned, you'll be that liaison between the students and the teacher. If a student's having a difficult time or maybe just needs that extension, you can um, kind of communicate that and um, be able to work with the teacher on that. You'll use data to track the student progress. So again, we wanna make sure that what we're doing is effective. So we'll monitor their progress throughout the year through different assessments and you know, grades and other, other metrics. You'll also lead your team as a coordinator in a specific area. So for instance, I was the after school coordinator on my team. So I love my team through like the after school programming and logistics, but together we supported that after school program. We also had a data coordinator, communications, um, yeah, d different areas. I'm blanking on the other ones, but those are some of the ones that stand out. And so those, those, that's kind of nice because it's in addition to your tutoring and mentoring responsibilities, you have this additional role that you can um, leverage and you know, uh, connect with your team on. Um, you'll also create experiences that positively influence school culture and build um, positive relationships with those students. Again, you're going to be that mentor for students that you're working with, but then also other students that are in the classroom or at your school because you'll get to know, inevitably you'll get to know other students um, that you're constantly interacting with and working with, even if they're not on your focus list. Um, and then for providing that positive um, school climate. I think that was something that was so drastic, drastically different from like my own educational experience. Um, I was privileged enough to grow up in a good, great education system where we had great teachers and great school system. And I think going into the school that I was serving at with City Year, it just felt very different from my own experience. Um, and so having a City Year team there really helps build up that positive environment. We did, you know, staff appreciations, attendance initiatives, different things to keep the students engaged and get them excited to be at school. Um, you'll also lead enriching after school programs. So like I mentioned, you're going to be there during the day and then you'll also be there after school running those after school programs as a team. And so typically ours were about two hours long. It was an hour of homework and uh, tutoring help. And then the second hour was typically an enrichment lesson. So those enrichment lessons were everything from we had college spotlights, yoga lessons, we did nutrition. Um, we did a lot of art education in our after school program because as we know with funding cuts, that's usually the first thing to go. So students didn't have a ton of art education during the day and we were able to do a lot of that in the after school program. Uh, we did some field trips to local museums too. It was cool to just kind of see too, like what we could, as a team we could leverage um, with the resources we had because we had a smaller budget to work with, but we were able to work with like local places and museums to get the free student tickets and all of that stuff. So I think that was one of my favorite spaces where we really got to get creative with it. If core members had like a passion or a hobby they wanted to maybe create into a lesson plan, like that was the perfect space to do that. Um, 
one other thing that I was blanking on on that. Oh, so, some schools need maybe supporting the after school programs that are already going on. Like I know in Silicon Valley, there's already a lot of STEAM curriculum curriculum built out for the after school programs there. So you may be supporting that and providing more of that people power. Um, but in some schools, you may be creating your own after school program. It just kind of depends. Um, and so your team will really be your support system. I still keep in touch to my teammates to this day. I was actually texting with one of my teammates um, just yesterday too. So I think, you know, it kind of speaks to the power of like the relationships you'll build, you'll build throughout the year. You'll get to know each other really well. A lot of folks are coming from the same space of like coming out of undergrad, wanting to work towards their career and professional goals before going on to those next steps. And so, you know, having one another to support each other through this experience, because you're all going through this experience together, um, will be super impactful and helpful to have, have that support network. Um, you also have leadership built in too. So you have your team, but then you have a team leader and a program manager. The team leader and the program manager, they're not going to be working with students at the school. They're going to be working with the core members. So they're working with the city or team to support them each and every day. They're going to be that liaison between the school site and the team if any issues come up um, to be able to like communicate with administrators and all of that but also they're going to be there to support core members one-on-one -on -one. so i constantly had one-on-ones with my program manager and my team leader to make sure that again this year was being utilized and geared towards my professional goals and so if it was you know writing a recommend getting a recommendation letter from one of them or taking time off to go interview. Um, they definitely want to support that and they encourage that. So those are ongoing conversations that we'll have throughout the year with um, your leadership. I tell people, you know, City Year is such a unique experience where, you know, for me, I grew up in Southern California, stayed in Southern California my entire life. And I was like, you know what, why not try something new? move across the country to Boston or just, you know, going to a new community. If you've never been to Seattle or Los Angeles, we have sites there. Um, it was the only time I saw myself being able to challenge myself in this way, because I think, you know, as you progress in your career, it's going to be, you know, doing a service opportunity may not be as viable later in your career. Um, but I think coming out of undergrad, it was a perfect time to do that. And I definitely got what I put in out of this experience. Um, I tell people it's only one year. Like I went into it with that mindset of like, I'm going to give it my all. Um, and that's exactly what I got out of it too. So something like this, I think, you know, I learned a lot about myself, um, how I, you know, lead, how I communicate, how I work with others, all of the skill sets that you're kind of going to carry along with you for the rest of your career. And I think I never would have challenged myself or pushed myself as much as like city or challenges you and pushes you to kind of think about these things. Also in terms of like my identity and like the privilege I had, you know, like I, I'm identified as a first gen college student, but I think within that too, there was still a lot of privilege and opportunity that I had growing up. And so city or was the first space that really challenged me to think about that and what that meant and what that looked like, especially in the context of like working with my students and working with my team. So a couple of the benefits, as you kind of saw in the first slide that I went over as an overview, um, you'll receive a biweekly living stipend. And again, this, is, this can vary depending on location. So um, it can be anywhere from 6.30 every two weeks to 9.30 every two weeks. And that's gonna be for all your living expenses. Um, so rent, uh, utilities, all of that. Um, so for instance, in Los Angeles, it's about $730 every two weeks. San Jose has the highest stipend in the network, which is about 930 every two weeks. I tell people it's, it's livable, it's feasible for one in like the basic expenses. Um, I did it in Boston when it was like much lower at the time too, but uh, we do provide $500 in relocation assistance if you're moving more than 50 miles to serve. So all of my San Diego students would qualify if they're moving from San Diego to um, even Los Angeles. The Seagull Education Award, so that's going to be a $6,000 scholarship that can be put towards any existing school loans that you might have, or you can put that towards future education. And that scholarship you'll get upon the successful completion of your city year. So that will come to you in an AmeriCorps account. And whenever you're ready to use that and apply that, you can um, log into that account and you know disperse those funds to either a loan servicer or a higher education institution if you're planning to apply that. 
And a lot of schools will match that Siegel Education Award too, because it is a nationally recognized program. SIDIR is a part of AmeriCorps. So a lot of um, institutions will match that. Um, and there's a list of different institutions um, that offer that match. Health insurance is provided. Um, we do give you time off throughout the year. We have an employee assistance program available, access to counseling services, loan forbearance during your service years. So if you do have any school loans, you don't have to, um, those go on deferment during your core year. Um, food benefits is another one that I utilize during my core year. Um, we give core members the resources on like how to sign up for those during their core year at the start of the year, um, just because it helps to stretch out your stipend a little bit um, further every two weeks if you have this additional income for food. Um, in Boston, it was probably like 200 a month that I got for food. Um, again, it's optional, but you're, it's available to you. And then there's also other local benefits, like in Boston, we got transportation passes. Um, so we got to get around the city for free via public transit. So other local benefits are built in um, that each site will work with like the local community to obtain for their core members. Um, in addition to the $6,000 scholarship that you'll receive upon completion of your core year, we also have um, other city or alum scholarships available to you. So these can be anywhere from 25 to 100% tuition scholarships. And the programs range from MBA programs to public policy, social work, counseling. Um, we have a whole host of programs, uh, scholarships available to City Year alum. So these you would have to like specifically apply for, but they are available to you after your core year. And so all that to say too, that again, you don't have to go into education to wanna do our program. Um, it is one of the bigger sectors that folks go into, but that can look so different. It's not necessarily like teaching. Some people do find their passion and their love for the classroom and go on to teach after this experience. And it was super helpful for them to get their feet wet with the education in the setting before going into um, you know, a full credential program or a teaching, another teaching program. Um, but some people go on to do like policy work within education. Government and nonprofit work is another big sector. Um, like I mentioned, I stayed in the nonprofit sector. I know I had another teammate that stayed in the sector too. Um, I had two people on my team that were using the year, the, the core year as a gap year for med school. So they were able to use the year, work on their med school applications, interview, do all of that and prepare for med school, like both mentally and physically in the fall. Um, so it's timeline wise, it works out too. If you're looking at grad programs and wanting to use a year to work on your applications and prepare yourself and also just figure out like what programs are best aligned for you. Um, I always use the example of like, I was applying for marriage and family therapy programs coming out of undergrad and um, I didn't really have any experience like, you know, working, working in a full-time setting or in a full-time capacity with people. And so I think this was super helpful to do city year to one, like get that experience at this level. Like you're working in a diverse community with diverse groups of people, um, but also to get that understanding. And I realized, you know, that program maybe wasn't as well aligned with like my career goals as I thought it would be. So that's why city year kind of gives you the time to like think through that and get that experience to better identify even within like, social work? Do you see yourself in a school setting or maybe a more private setting or uh, do you work, do you want to work on a macro level or a micro level? Like all of those things. Um, and I think just getting this on the ground experience too of like the social um, injustice, the different social and economic like injustices in the communities that we serve um, and being civically informed and engaged in this, in this way um, and taking that with you in your respective sector can speak volumes. Um, grad programs, employers know what service learning entails, the skill set that you gain from it too, and that you're going to be that much more of a well-rounded candidate going into some of these spaces too. So in terms of the application, um, we, like I mentioned, you, we have 29 locations across the country and you can select where you want to serve. Um, across all our 29 locations, we have about 3,000 core members serving. Uh, we're in 350 schools and we're supporting over 226,000 students. So there's a couple different ways you can apply. So you can submit your application to one site if you, let's say you only wanna serve with City or Denver and City or Denver only. I tell people submit your application there. Um, or you can uh, select a region. 
So for instance, maybe you want to stay on the West region, but you don't really mind where. So the West region will consist of Denver, Seattle, Sacramento, San Jose, and LA. And so within that, we'll place you at a higher need site where we historically have needed more core members or it's been hard, harder to get core members there, which in the West region, it's been San Jose and LA. Um, just because L San Jose, the cost of living there, and then LA is a bigger site. We have about 250 core members that we're um, recruiting or hoping to recruit for city or Los Angeles. Um, so a couple different ways. You can submit it to one site only. You can submit it to a region. Normally, I find people have a preference for a particular site. I tell people to choose, you know, put that site on your application because that will play a role into um, your entire city year like experience too so if you want to go somewhere new um, or if you want to be closer to home like again all of this will factor into like your experience and I want to make sure that folks are comfortable with where they're serving for that entire year and so a couple of upcoming deadlines our next one like I mentioned is April 17th the applications it's all done online it can probably take about you know 30 minutes to an hour to complete and then by the time you submit your application, let's say you submit by Friday, April 17th, you'll be invited to interview the following week or invited to sign up for an interview um, the following week. Interviews will be conducted and then you'll be notified by May 15th if you're invited to serve. So it's pretty quick. We try to work rather quickly to get your response. And then once you hear back on May 15th, you have two weeks to either confirm or reject that offer if invited to serve. And so, like I mentioned, the interview you'll be um, will ask that you submit a professional reference. Um, typically, a week after the deadline, those references have to come in. So, if you want to work on your application this week, submit it by Friday, and then maybe next week work on getting your reference submitted. Um, that's perfectly fine, and then we'll notify you via email on May fifteenth. So, if anyone has any questions, I'll oh, like open it up now for questions too. But feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, you can send me an email or a text, whichever one worked best for me. I'd love to answer more questions and chat one-on-one, -on -one, especially if you're considering applying or just thinking of doing a year of service. I definitely encourage it. Obviously, I'm going to be a big proponent of you know joining City Year, but I'm also a big proponent of doing a service learning experience. I think it's so beneficial, and I think everyone should do a year of service. So that is my um, spiel on service learning programs too but i'd love to now open it up in yeah to questions i see there's one in the chat already um you want to just take it as the yeah. questions roll in okay so submit your questions in the group chat and then as we see them adriano okay. can respond to them yeah great question so yeah there are a couple different um ways to move up within the organization so those team leader positions and the program manager positions, those typically are positions that have um, city or alum in them. So meaning they served as a city or core member, then they moved up and applied for a second year as a team leader. Um, once you get the per to the program manager level, that at that level, it's a staff level position. So it's a full salaried one. Um, but there's multiple ways that you can move up within the organization. So either those or positions. Now that you've done the city or AmeriCorps member role, we'd love to promote folks into those team leader or program manager positions because you've done the position, you know what it entails, and you know the model and like the work, and now you can lead a team through service. Um, in terms of our staff level positions too, we love to also hire um, from the core. So at our 29 locations, we have offices at each of those locations. Every location runs as its own 501c3. So they all have directors, um, coordinator positions, uh, development staff, all of that. And so we also hire core members from, um, the, from the core to serve in those staff level positions. It just kind of depends what your preference is. Um, the one benefit with like the team leader position, that one's still gonna be under the AmeriCorps funding guidelines. So you're eligible to get that Siegel Education Award for up to two years. So you can get earn that $6,000 scholarship up to two years. And so that's one added benefit for people that maybe want to serve as an AmeriCorps the first year and then the second year move up as a team leader because um, they can still receive that scholarship. 
and it's still a stipend position. So that's why I say the program manager now that that starts getting into our staff level positions that are paid like a full salary. Um, and then the second part of that, it, we do have people that apply for like the program manager positions directly because um, that's a staff level position. So you, you can apply. Um, I think it definitely helps to have that understanding coming from like within and like having the core experience, but those are open to folks if you want to apply for those. Um, those are all on our website. Like if you go to the bottom of our website, um, our careers page will have those positions posted there. Since I don't specifically recruit for those positions, I can't speak too, too much to those ones. Um, the one, the application that you'll see kind of front and center on our website is for the city or AmeriCorps member position. While, while you all think of questions, I'm gonna post the Google form for you to fill out your information for um, Passport, Compass, and Connect Point. So make sure to fill that form out so that I can award you your points correctly. But keep sending your questions in, in the chat and we'll continue talking. That's and Adriana fun. posted her email. Has anyone considered doing a year of service or has, has anyone explored that? Great question. Do you have to be a certain age? I know I've realized none of my slides like encompass the requirements for this position. We, we just revamped our PowerPoint this year. So um, yes, a couple requirements for the specific position only for the AmeriCorps member role. Um, you have to be between the ages of 17 and 25. And that's just for the AmeriCorps member position, just because that's, you know, we want to recruit um, New York peer tutors and mentors to be serving in our schools. Um, you have to be either a U.S. citizen or a permanent legal resident. And that's just because, again, we receive government funding for the AmeriCorps position. It's a federally funded program. Again, our staff level positions do not have those same requirements. So if you don't fit those requirements, definitely encourage you to check um, our careers page for those. Um, and then last requirement, just being able to commit those 11 months of service from June, I'm sorry, from July 2020 through June of 2021. Great question. Uh, is there housing available for international applicants? Um, so another great question. Um, unfortunately, we don't provide housing. Um, and so if you're an international student, um, again, you just have to fall under those parameters to have either permanent legal resident or US citizen. Um, in terms of housing, though, we provide you with resources on like where to look for housing. So. Um, when I served with City of Boston, I was invited um, to like the Facebook group there, and that's where I found my roommates. And together we look for housing once we got to Boston. So they'll provide you on like recommendations on like neighborhoods to look, uh, look into just based on, um, you know, where other core members have lived in the past. And then also what's within close proximity to the schools where we'll be serving. I know in cities like San Jose, they have like two apartment buildings where they normally like recommend or refer core members to you because those buildings historically have been um, feasible for core members on a stipend. And they're also within like closer proximity to the schools that we're gonna serve. So we'll try to give you guidance and resources around that, but we don't physically provide housing um, with the exception of City Year New Hampshire. City Year New Hampshire is the one site in the network that does have um, what it, it's, it's open to other AmeriCorps programs. So that one does house uh, like city Air Corps members and other AmeriCorps members too. So that might be something to consider if you're wanting to maybe go to city or New Hampshire. Um, Cause yeah, that is going to be the biggest like cost during your core year is rent and sometimes the feasibility of that. Um, again, on a stipend, I tell people it's livable for when you're not going to have this surplus to, you know, be, traveling or like doing all this extra stuff, but I tell people it's livable. I just resent the form. It seems like people are having trouble accessing it. So try it again, copy paste the link. 
and let me know if you continue to have trouble. Keep sending your questions in too, sorry, trying to troubleshoot both. No, no worries. Still did not work. Okay. If it's not working for you, it won't let you copy the link. Interesting. Okay. This is good feedback. Um, second one. The second one worked for someone. So maybe okay, it's working for some and not others. I can send it in a follow-up email to all of you as well. Here, let's see. Okay, it worked for me. Perfect, thank you. Oh, some devices won't let you copy from the chat. Okay, I will send it in follow-up um, to all of you because I can download out who was on the call. So I'll send a follow-up email with it. And if you didn't already fill it out, then you can fill it out at that time. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Utilize Adriana while she's here. If you are interested in applying, if you have questions, if you're nervous about something, um, she's here and happy to answer questions, so send them in. Yeah, definitely. Like I had mentioned, you know, in the beginning, I think as we think about like next steps and just kind of where things are headed in the next couple months, I mean, it's hard to tell and things look just pretty uncertain, but I think, you know, service opportunities are a good and viable option to be able to, um, you know, have a paid position, like, yes, it's not going to be a full salary just yet, but it will be a paid position where I, where I think you can gain some tremendously valuable skills um, that can then help you, you know, and leverage that network into your career or into grad school. Um, like I mentioned, too, we also want to make sure we're working towards that professional development throughout the year. So Fridays, typically Fridays were like professional and leadership development days. So those days we were net, you know, we had different workshops set up throughout the year where we were networking with alumni in the area. We had corporate sponsors come in and do like resume workshops. So like in Boston, we had Deloitte, which was one of our corporate sponsors. And I know in like San Jose, Silicon Valley, they'll have like workshops with Google and like other companies in the area to again, make sure that we're building that network throughout the year. And there's, you know, likely a city or alum in an organization or a company that you're interested in pursuing um, after your core year, and we definitely want to encourage you to get connected and like provide the resources to connect with them and learn more. But like, yeah, I put my email in the chat and then my phone number, like I said, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly. Um, even if you just are thinking about like service or just wanting to get a little more information, I'm happy to chat more about that. Um, but also if you want, are considering applying too, it's definitely feasible for our next deadline, um, if you want to solidify like post-graduation plans within the next month, um, that would be a good way of doing that. Yeah, awesome. Well, if there aren't any other questions, then I want to say thank you to Adriana for taking the time to be here. Uh, we really appreciate you going virtual. And thank you to all of the students for coming in and joining us today. I know you're all going through a lot of changes right now and, you know, your next steps after this semester may not be top of mind. So I really appreciate you coming and um, encourage you to keep coming to these events. I think they're really valuable. So I'll send a follow-up email with Adriana's email address, um, any other little tidbits that she'll send me as well, like deadlines and everything. And then I'll also send the CRP link. So fill that out if you didn't already. And if you have any feedback on this info session logistically um, on our end, please let me know. This was the first one we did. So I would love to hear the student feedback and change it moving forward for future ones. So thank you all for being here and let us know if you have questions. Thank, thank you both. You have a good day.
Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kelsey. I appreciate you arranging <laughs> all of the logistics and everything too. This is this is awesome. I did a, cu a couple of virtual things last week too, so I feel like now it's getting easier to kind of like switch to this. And 